Welcome to Tell Me at syndicatednews.net. Today we're spending time with Kent Websock. He's from the Oweaku International Justice Project, First Voice Indigenous Radio, and the United Confederation of the Taino people who are going to bring their voices to Occupy Wall Street and remind us to rethink Columbus Day. Kent, join us. Thank you. Yes, as you just mentioned, I'm from an organization called Aweaku International Justice Project. We are a traditional Lakota organization that Lakota is more commonly known in America as Sioux. Um, we're the people of the Great Plains um, from North and South Dakota area. Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, those were our leaders that are well known to a lot of Americans. And also, we're the ones that got Custer, so that, that's our claim to fame. We have an international human rights office here in New York City that works mostly at the United Nations on our treaty and human rights issues that have been violated over the centuries by various European colonists, of course, including the United States. And as this Occupy Wall Street movement began to grow, we recognized the potential there for an alliance with what they were talking about because we have suffered the excesses of American corporatism for, for generations now. And so when they invited us to participate today, we were happy to do it. And as you mentioned, there is a Taino, there are some Taino organizations, which are the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean area that Columbus, of course, first had contact with that will also be participating. His name is Roberto Borrero. He'll be there. And we have a young woman from the Navajo Nation, also in the Southwest. Her name is Janine Yazi. And finally, Teokas and Ghost Horse, who, like me, is Lakota. And he is the host of a radio program on WBAI here in New York City called First Voices Indigenous Radio. We also heard that Rosalie Little Thunder might be there. She's one of our elders from the West. Um, she lives um, in Rapid City. But whenever we are participating in these events, Aweaku, as, as a traditional organization, before we say or do anything, we talk to our elders and our leaders back home, and we get permission for all of this. So I have been speaking with them and, and getting the ideas for the message we want to send out, and Rosalie is, is one of my mentors and has been someone who has, has kind of guided us through all of these processes and continues to with this, because we don't just represent individuals, we represent a nation of indigenous people the Lakota Nation. So it's important that we have those connections and that our leadership is, is behind everything we do. And I see that you've always been speaking for American Indian Law Alliance and speaking for the Indian rights in the United States and Canada. Well, Indian the Law Alliance was an organization I belonged to prior to working for Aweaku. I've been with Aweaku. Aweaku is it focuses just on our nation. I'm now just working with my own people, the Lakota people. And the Law Alliance is an NGO at the United Nations, which isn't really attached to any specific native group or native nation. Well, you're going to join the movement at 5 p.m. today. It's going to be down at the Occupy Wall Street area in Zuccotti Park. I guess they're now calling it Liberty Park. Correct. And, yeah, it's at that southeast corner there. They have a public forum at 5 o'clock, which is under that big red statue that's in the corner of the park there. We'll have some of our, our the speakers that I mentioned, as well as hopefully some of the community will come out to support us. And we look forward to an open discussion with the folks there. Ultimately, the goal is to try and get them to pass a declaration supporting indigenous rights, indigenous people's rights. And this has already been done in at the Occupy Boston group and also at Occupy Denver just last night. And we have sent out a proposal this morning with the suggested language and we'll be presenting that tonight at their General Assembly here in New York. We're looking forward to 
them passing that as the sort of principles behind what their intention is in in interfacing with us as allies, as Indigenous nations. Well, I can't thank you enough for just giving us these few minutes. It's very important to try and keep in touch with all people involved with Occupy Wall Street and its huge movement. It continues to grow. I don't see it stopping soon. And now that the Indigenous peoples of of North America are joining, I see it growing all the more. Right. I think it's the actually the indigenous peoples of all of the Americas. I think and there's an increasing movement to involve the peoples from the South too, because especially here in New York City, much of the immigrant population, or what what we would you would call immigrant population from Central America and South America, are actually indigenous peoples. You know, Indian people from those regions. So they have been participating. I went on Wednesday to the big demonstration, and there were a lot of Native folks from the South here as well. So it's it's kind. New York City for Indian people is the same as New York City for any other people. It's kind of a uh, I don't want to say melting pot because I hate that term, but a place where we all come together and you can find all of us here. Well, perhaps we can call it a blending pot. Well, I, um, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. I know you're very busy considering you're involved with this program today at 5 o'clock, which is just four hours from now. So we want to get this on the air as quickly as possible. And thank you again, Kent. I really appreciate your help. No problem. Thank you so much for hearing our voices and putting us on the air. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.